Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. Today what I'm going to do is take you on a project that I just completed in Memphis, Tennessee, where a client reached out to me and asked me he wanted to do this crimson red Grisello Venetian plaster from Fermalux in his home office. So I did. But before we get started, if you don't mind, go down below, hit that subscribe button. That'll let you know when I create new videos and hit the like button so I know that you like what I'm doing. This video is a little long, but it's going to take you through the process of the room start to finish. So let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do to get this room ready is sand the walls and then we're going to tape off all the trim. Yeah. Door frames, we got crown molding and of course baseboard. Excuse the noise, there's painters working around here, I have no control of that. So let's get to it and uh, start taping everything off using one inch and two inch tape. So the first thing we're going to do is obviously open a box, okay? This is how it comes to you. Cut the tape, simple, simple. The reason I'm doing this is to show you how well they package the product. Paper on top, the wood from bumping around the side and exploding. Get a plastic wrap it all the way down to here. Let me back up. So they wrap it in plastic all the way down to here. That way, in the event that the leak comes loose, your plaster doesn't leak out and cause a problem. So that's it. So the micro primer is here, ready to go. Got a roller ready, half inch, I'm sorry, three, three eighths inch neck roller. This is from uh, Wooster, it's a super fat roller. I've already delinted it using the tape, where I take the tape it down and roll it up and down like so. Let me show you again. You simply take the tape, put it on your toe, and you roll it up and down. Oops, we still have some in there. Actually, what this does is pull all the fuzz off of the roller. That way you'll get in all the walls. All right, I'm sorry about the noise. There's a crew of painters working on the other side of the house. All right, Black Island, Curtain Peacock, Crystal Brush, 3 8 inch ready to go. Let's put this away. I always strain my primer on my paints before I use them, just to make sure it gets in anything else. Meaning, the jump from here goes onto that wall. Another thing I like to do, see this? This is good paint. Sorry. Let's take that sauce, get it off of here. Another trick I like, another trick, it is a tip. Always pour from the back of the bucket. Never cross the label, that way if you get paint down here, you can't tell what this is. Always pour from the back. Through the strand, this is a double strand. I'm gonna fill this bucket up about a gallon and a half of product. Wipe the lip. Mess. And the other thing I like to do, wipe down the inside of the bucket. Any excess material goes down. It doesn't stick to the sides. You're just wasting it. It's going to be clunky. All right. Put the lid back on nice and tight so we can get air in there. Now, the other thing, while this is draining out, then I'll take my brush and force the rest of this down there. So I'm not waiting or wasting material. And then on the bottom, pull this off, make sure anything on the bottom, pull the excess off down here so we're not wasting. Alright. And there's a little bit of stuff in there, not to be, that's not unexpected, it's not here. Put this in the water, 
That way it's easy to clean. Uh, honestly, all I'm going to do is simply go like this, back and forth. And look, we're clean as a whistle. It's going to be so good. All right, let's put some of the clean product in the cut pots. Again, wipe your edge. Product stuff to the side of buckets and wasting products. Okay, this room is going to go a dark red. I always put the white primer on because I like the vibrancy of the red. If I paint the walls, primer tint my primer to match. I don't get what I'm looking for. Micro primer, interior, exterior, tints with pigment. Never paint, but in this case, the sample will be approved. We're going to a white primer, so we're going to stick with a white primer because we submit a sample for control and approval, and that way we replicate what we've already had approved. So. I'm going to start by cutting a wall in and rolling a wall. Let's get to it. Okay, so everything's been base coated with the micro primer. Brush and rolled. It's completely dry. Now I'm going to take a sanding roll with my 150 grit paper and I'm going to sand it. Here's the reason why it has a slight, well, it's gritty. And since we're going for that glass look, I want it smooth. Remember, Micro Primer works under Grisello and Marmarino. Marmarino's heavier texture. So I was going to sand it. I'm going to sand it two times, side to side, top to bottom, make sure I don't miss anything. I've already sanded three walls, so I'm going to sand this last wall and then dust everything down, get ready for the plaster. Okay, here's where we're at in the process. You saw preparation, base coat application. Now it's time to start putting some plaster on the wall. I've sanded the walls, you saw that, I've dusted everything down, you didn't need to see that, just simply dusting it off to make sure none of that dust gets into plaster. Back here, you can already see, I ran a very small section of wall to get started, I'm going to show you how to do this wall. So, let's get our tools and materials in, let's get started. I have to take off the crown molding. When I put this tape on, I'm going to hold it back about an eighth of an inch, by the way. Because as I build this plaster up, if I hold the pipe paint, the hat tape tight to the wall, when I get it to take it off, it'll make it a little bit harder. Okay, now back to the tools. Alright, so I'm just going to come across like so. Well, it would help if that stayed up there. So come across, and we'll work out. Gather it up. Come across the top of the door. We have this inside corner. I'm going to take the other side of the trowel, come in tight. Put my tip of the trowel, it's a trapezoid trowel. Now I won't get in that tiny corner. I'm going to take my blade, my spatula, come up here. Just work that tiny corner like so. And then I'll fill the rest. Nice having a small spatula with you at all times. No, and it's okay some of the primer shows through, just like I've shown you on the sample board. It's okay, it's gonna get three layers.
Okay, as you can see, the first coat is finished on all the walls. Still drying back there. But this wall here, this guy, I did yesterday, so I'm gonna start the second part, second layer. And uh, by the time I get this one done, that should be finished. And then around the room. So using the same tools, the same materials, let's get started. Second coat is completely finished. Take a look around, see the difference. Not quite dry there, dry here, so it's a little dark. So we're gonna go to this wall and start our third coat, which is our compression coat. It's gonna use that shine. So what we're gonna do is go from the, don't go anywhere. First and second coats, we're done with the medium sized trowel. I'm gonna bring out my small trowel to burnish with, okay? I know it's dirty, I was working on a small section. See the difference? So this is gonna get me into smaller areas. So I'm gonna grab my plaster and get to work. Okay, so the walls have been burnished, dried overnight, and now we're gonna start the waxing process. Here is the spatula wax. So you need to let these walls, first off, back up. The walls have to dry completely overnight, make sure there's no moisture trapped in the surface. And now we're gonna take the spatula wax for protection. We don't need it, but they wanna protect it from staining. So the walls itself are water resistant, but they will stain. But you put the wax on top, it prevents it from staining from things like soda, wine, juices, anything like that. So we're gonna get the trowel out, trowel it on, and we're gonna buff it. So let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. Okay, so we're about to do the first pass. The wax is dry for about an hour. This is the first pad we're gonna use. It's a compounding pad. This cuts the wax first, meaning Okay, the wax is dry for an hour. This is the first pass with our compound pad. This will, this is a more aggressive pad, so it makes the wax lay down and get shiny. Then we'll take it, switch it, and we'll use the second pad. So let's get started with this one. Okay, so the red room is finished, or the office in this case, which is the red room. Uh, after we did the final polish and polishing pad, you take a lint-free, color-free, texture-free rag and wipe everything down real soft, getting the lint off that was left from the polishing pad. So check it out. I want to thank you for watching. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. Before we go, if you don't mind, go down below, hit that subscribe button. That'll let you know when new videos come out. And if you don't mind, hit the like while you're down there as well. Now, for more information about classes or hiring me to do projects, you can reach me directly at thefauxschool.com. Send us an email or call the studio. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.